Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Axe Razor. In the last episode, we finally made Phil more peaceful, and it's on the Blood Pool. But I forgot to do something when I went to Blood Pool. I forget to get something from Fillmore. So let's go to the second sub option on the to move option here. Observe the people. And let's go ahead and take an offering. What do we have? Huh. Okay, I thought that would be available later in the game when we were actually doing things with Blood Pool. Apparently you can get it now. This is the bridge building ability that the people of Fillmore taught themselves. And you will be needing this later on when you start building things and stuff in Blood Pool. They also found a strange statue in part one when I did all of the sim mode stuff at once. This is the bomb, and if you use it in sim mode, any monsters that are on the screen will immediately be obliterated. There's not a whole lot of them, so use them when you need them. We won't really be needing any of those until a little later in the game. For now, though, that's all we have to do left in Fillmore, so now we can go to Blood Pool. And let's go ahead and fight monsters, because what else can we do in Blood Pool other than fight monsters? We can't even go down there yet. And just like Fillmore Acts 1 and 2, every time you go to a new act, there will always be a lot of enemies. They're really simple to describe. This act is no exception. This is Act 1 of Blood Pool. Definitely don't want to drop in that water because it will kill you. You also have these little tr trolls in red that will throw rocks at you. And these lizard men with boomerangs. They throw their boomerang low. You want to jump over that. And when it returns to the guy, you want to duck under it so, well, it goes right over your head. You got these little birds-like things that jump around in the sine wave pattern. Or rather, fly around in the sine wave pattern. These are the things that jump. You can hit them with a crouching sl slash attack in case they do hit the ground. And I'm taking some dumb damage. There we go. There should be some health here, but not much. It's a half-eaten apple and it's only going to give me two points of health. That I'm instantly going to lose and then get back for no reason whatsoever. Great! And I... Did not expect that thing to show up right there. Want to get rid of as many enemies as I can. Here. And you definitely don't want to hit that statue just yet because it is going to be useful. The thing that's in there. And thankfully, that thing managed to be back there. So I can grab this. It is a one-up. Now the ones you grab in the axe are only temporary. There are some permanent extra lives that you can get from doing stuff in sim mode, and I just managed to mess that up, didn't I? You know what, whatever. We're not gonna need the, the uh, health for what we're gonna do because this is a very easy boss. It's this griffin. Avoid the fireballs. Wait for this thing to go up the top. When it goes the other side, slash at it. Then you want to follow it to the other side. When it's in the middle, you want to slash at it again. And I just messed that up. But thankfully, that extra life will respawn. And so will that health in case I do need it. I'd rather die at the boss instead of before it. Because that way, I can keep getting as many points as I need for maximum population and blood pool. Which is going to be a little more difficult than doing it in Fillmore, but not by much, thankfully. And let's remember not to hit that statue yet. I thought I could reach up to it the first time around, and apparently I could not. Alright. Wait for this thing to come to... The top right. 
And then when it leaps back to the other side. You want to hit it again. I guess I'm going to mess it up right there. He'll pop up at the left. There we go. Also want to avoid the fireballs, but that's pretty obvious. If you can get at least three shots on him before he runs away from you, that's great. You're usually going to get two. I got one there. But if you can get three, that's really good. You don't even need your magic here either. If you want to use your magic, press A. I forgot to mention that too. But, well, we didn't have to use it then because there really wasn't much of a need for doing so. Ah, oh, there's that magic three. There's that magic three. Ah, I thought I was going to get, get the last hit there. And I'm not going to waste my magic. I'm just going to wait for him to come to me again. Bam. There we go. Blood Pool Act 1 clear. And I have almost 1,400 points. I'm definitely going to get maximum population here. Well, at least part of the prerequisite for it. Building your way to maximum population is a little harder. Because, well, we have some new things that we have to deal with. Such as all that watery ground that we have. And, of course, they wanted to do something right away, just like in Fillmore. Here, they're going to tell you about the swamplands that I just mentioned. They tell you to use a sunlight to drive the marshlands. To do that, you just go to the miracles option and then select the sun. This costs 30 SP to use and will dry up one space on the grid. Like so. And it's very nice. There are, there's a little more enemy diversity here. You have one bat, two silver dragon, and one red devil. I will mention the red devil and what it does when we run into it. For now though, let's just get some of this stuff taken care of. I'll build shortly. And there's the devil. This guy takes four hits to kill, and regardless of where you hit him from, he always gets knocked back to the north. So if you're like, he's like, the, you're like directly north of the guy, he's gonna run right into you sooner or later, and you will be forced to back up before he can do that. It's very annoying. And that's pretty much all there is in terms of new things that I need to mention. So I might as well go into the spiel that I was going to try to do for when I have nothing else to talk about in terms of gameplay and gameplay mechanics and things that are in the game. I tried to start in part one. Tips for learning how to basically get in the whole groove of Let's Play in case you yourself are planning to do it for the first time. I've already mentioned some of the stuff that should be very obvious, such as playing stuff that you like. Of course, I've deviated from that get, from that rule myself with games such as King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. I, that one I was actually more curious with than actually wanting to play for fun. I wanted to see how bad it could get, and it got pretty bad. I also mentioned that you should get some uh, tea or something to drink in case you do vocals because, well, you're going to be talking a lot. Which definitely can't be further from the truth. I actually have some unsweetened tea with me right now. It's like right to my left, on my desk, ready for me to grab in case I get parsed and I can't do th things with my vocal cords as well as I want to. 
because I do know myself to talk of the storm. Some people do, some people don't. If you do talk a lot in your LPs, by all means do use a, a whole drink of something. Have something on hand for when you need to quench any thirst. You know, moisten up the throat a little bit. And, oh, we have a uh, message from the townspeople. Apparently, one of them has an, old, has an eldest son named Teddy. And, well, he's a bit curious. But they're like, eh, it's going to sort itself out. But I'm going to tell you right now, we have not heard the last of Teddy. We'll be seeing more of Teddy soon enough, viewers. Soon enough. I also want to use the uh, lightning on these bushes here, but that's kind of self-explanatory. Especially after all the bushes that we took down in Fillmore. And I'm not going to use the bridge quite yet, because I want to get done with this thing first. I want to get the monster here with the bats. Because that way... I can take care of those things as easily as I possibly can. I want to get rid of those things first, so that way I don't have to worry about super fast flying enemy creature things that try to run off with my villagers at the first opportunity. Anyway, back to my LP tips. I mentioned having a drink on hand and playing what you like. Get a good computer. Please get a good computer. I'm using something with 4 gigabits of RAM right now. It is Christmas 2014 as I record this. It is December 25th, 2014. And um, while it's doable for some things, such as recording stuff in ZSNES, a very lightweight Super Nintendo emulator, it may not be enough for other things, especially... Uh, computer games of these days that, well, might need some higher recommended computer specula specs. And we have another message. Great. Ah! Wheat! Wheat will be, will be an offering, so you can take that as many times as you need in order to, well, get people to well, grow wheat. And I'm going to take one right now. And then... Can I get another one here, or would I have to go get out and go back in? I have to go out and get back, get back in, okay. I may have taken one wheat, but I can actually take another wheat. I still have room in my inventory for that. You can only hold eight items in your inventory at any given time. And you can't discard anything, so you will definitely have to use something in case you want to free up space in your inventory. And, okay, back to the Let's Play tips. Get a good computer because, while it is good for... While having something with four gigs of RAM is works well for, like... Older games, especially emulated games for like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, it may not be exactly what you need for more powerful older systems as well as the computer games of the day. I'm definitely trying to get a. Ow. Trying to get a computer of any sort with 6 gigs of RAM in it myself. So I can go back to doing things other than Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. I want to do other systems again. I mentioned that in other update videos, but, well, I might as well go ahead and mention that again. Seem to be doing pretty well on the money, though. It's still going to take me some time, but at least I know that I'm saving money. And I'm going to go ahead and use the wheat in this field here. Still got the bridge, but I don't want to use it quite yet. Speaking of the bridges, once you give Bloodpool the ability to, to build bridges, you don't want to build any more than three. 
You can do it in two. I did it in the practice run. But if you build any more than three, you won't have the maximum amount of structures. And therefore, getting maximum population is impossible, even if you have more than enough points. I don't know what the maximum amount of, of points spread across both Act 1 and 2 that you need to have combined, but I know it's less than what you need for Fillmore. Matter of fact, you, if, if you died like where the 1-up was, like while you were low on time, and then went back to where that 1-up was, got it again, got all the points you needed, died, and then just repeated that whole process, You'd be able to get all the points you needed and then some in the first act, just right then and there. But again, that's only part of the prerequisite for maximum population in Blood Pool. You have to build carefully so that you only use two bridges. And only, well, not two, but three bridges. You can do it in two, that's how I did it. But if you build any more than three, you will... Pretty much sabotage any efforts at maximum population you were trying to go for. And they're still not there yet. That is annoying. Also, I forgot to mention that the arrows are not completely centered. If you're facing south, the arrows will be a little bit to the left, and if you're facing north, the arrows will be a little bit to the right. It kind of gets annoying sometimes. I've sometimes missed enemies in sim mode because of that. Also, our civilization, civilization level is now up to level 2, which is really good. Also, we have another unexpected message. Ah. Ah, this is where they start mentioning bridges if you haven't used the bridge already. You think this is where you would have to go back to Fillmore and get the bridge, but apparently, as soon as you go to Blood Pool and then go back to Fillmore... You can get the bridge already. I didn't even know that until I actually started recording this episode. So to teach them how to build bridges, all you have to do is, if you haven't went back to Fillmore and gotten the bridge like I did at the beginning of the video, go ahead and do that now. And then once you do that, come back to Blood Pool, go to the offering menu, go to use offering, and select the bridge. You don't have to lay it anywhere or anything like you would the Wii. It'll just be used and I'll... I'll Automatically, people will know how to build bridges. That That's it. And I'm going to go in this direction just to be safe. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to go back to the temple just to be safe, and then I can plan from there. Also, I got too close to that dragon. Also, it's time to... Uh, Try up more of that swamp land. I haven't shown what, what's around here. Turns out there's a castle here. That's going to come into play later on. There's a cave near there. There's, of course, a red lake, which is the reason why this place is called Blood Pool. And we have another level up. I believe we are now at five. Okay, good. That's what I thought we were at. And we need... 950 people to reach level 6. Also, there is something happening over there, right where all those bushes are. And guess what? I told you we hadn't seen the last of Teddy, or heard either. He's run away from home, and they can't find him. So, they've made some bread for him to remind him of home, and have him come back. It was available as an offering. Also, that's where the demons are coming from, those little red devils. But where's the lair? Well, if you use lightning where these bushes are, and then use a lightning to burn the bushes, you will find the lair. There's one problem. We can't build to it because the mountains are in our way. We can't build over those mountains. We'll find a way, though, eventually. For now, though, I just want to get rid of that s this swampland here. And then, I want to build to the south. And 
Okay. Finally, the last of that swamp land. Finally, we'll be able to get rid of it. And there's Teddy right where the cave is. So in case you need to know where to go to find him, there he is. Anyway, time to go ahead and... Get the bread. It is available as an offering. And they begged you to bring poor lonely Teddy back to them. And to use bread, all you have to do is just go to use offering, select the bread. And then, center the little circle so that Teddy is in it, and then press B once he's in it. He'll return back home. And my return home, I mean disappear, and then you get a message. Teddy's back home, and turns out there was a reason why he left. He was trying to figure out why the lake was poisoned. And, and as a matter of fact, his parents were quite proud of him. And he actually found out what it was. Turns out it's that monster lair that we can't get to. Plus, he's also found a skull in the cave nearby. And I'm going to be using that later. Soon enough. Wait for these guys to build again, and then I'll start directing the town. Okay. Um... Yeah, that'll do. That'll do for now. I almost thought too hard on that. I forgot I can still do what I want to do. It's just a matter of trying to get myself to do it in a specific way. And thankfully it is doable. Okay. Let's lead this again. Because I don't have any roads leading down. I hope I didn't mess that up. Okay, good. I didn't mess that up. Oh, no. Oh, that... No, actually, I can still do... Th I can still do it. I can still do it. I did not expect that to happen. I can still do this. Yeah, I can still do this. Good. Whew! For a minute, I thought I had sabotaged my efforts in some way. If they don't have a path right here... I won't be building a third bridge. That is, that is exactly what you want for maximum population. Not exactly how I expected to do it, but at least I didn't completely fail. Also, that's the last we're going to see of that stupid dragon right there. Whew! And we're also now at Civilization Level 3. So let's go ahead and tear into the... Everything to the south there. Now, I can't build... To the... Well, you're, you'll see what I'm talking... You'll see what I'm talking about soon enough. We do have a road connecting Fillmore and Bloodpool now. Now that we've gotten rid of that monster lair with the silver dragons. And we can tease, they can tease them to produce wheat. And I'm totally going to mess this up, aren't I? I'm probably going to mess this up.
Oh well, it's still possible to reach uh, maximum level. There is a maximum level for the game. I believe it's 20. And once we reach it, we'll, re we'll finally be at full power. For now, though, I do want to work on getting this lair taken care of. But that way, I can take care of that one. There's going to be a way to do it, eventually. And we finally feel the third monster lair. And we've managed to find a strange statue. I'm pretty sure that's another bomb, so let's go ahead and take that bomb because we can. Pretty sure if I build any more rows, I'll build a fourth bridge, and I don't want to do that. There is the bomb. I'm definitely going to take that. And I'm also going to take the magic skull, too, because we're going to use it right now. Turns out it destroys a monster's lair whenever you use it. And there's one that the people won't be able to seal. But, since we can reach it and we know where it is, we can go ahead and use it over there. I do want to wait until I get more people in the town before I actually go ahead and use the jewel. And... Good. I'm doing it right. And I am now at level 6. And the next level is going to be over 1,000. It's going to be 1,200. Okay. I also want to mention some other things for when you decide to LP. Be sure to get some good equipment, too. Be sure to get a good microphone. I mean, I used to have a good, have a uh, RCA headset that was that did the job well back in the day, but it wasn't the best quality for my voice or for anyone's voice for that matter. But it still got the job done. I eventually got a USB mic, which actually sounds better than using one that uses the usual 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks and my voice sounds a lot cleaner cleaner and clearer and you can tell does it make the difference absolutely you don't really need a USB headset but it does help a lot. Then you got some of the microphones such as the snowball and the, the blue snowball and the I think it's called the snow yeti or the blue yeti or something where the sound is like very very good. And then you got the people who have like all the money and have like I wouldn't say all the money in the world but have like a good amount of money who use like a professional quality mic and a pop filter kind of like the angry video game nerd. I mean if you can afford that go to it. Just make sure you have good enough quality content, you know, in order to back it up. Because all the most advanced stuff available on the internet that you can get your hands on affordably ain't gonna mean jack if, well... You can't make anything to the absolute best of your ability. And, of course, also push your abilities as well. Commentary is probably the hardest part, and uh, if you've ever watched my first Let's Play for Batman Returns, which is the first thing I ever did, oh boy, compared to this, uh, compare that, compare that to this, I, it, it's a long way. Also, am I still building? Did I? Oh, I haven't built everything yet. That was weird. I'm like, okay, did I miss stuff or something? 
I still need to get rid of all the civilization level 1 and 2 houses before I do anything else. And of course, I'm going to wait for the... Alright. Beginning of a new turn. Let's go ahead and use the Magical Skull on this final monster lair. And I have another 30 minute video, but this is how I like it. Use it right here. And that magic... Magic. Monster lair is gone. And when you get rid of that monster lair, guess what happens to the lake? It turns from red to blue. And it's awesome. The water is pure and clean again. Of course, once you get rid of that last monster lair, trouble arises. Oh wait, not yet. They've learned how to fish. They have found a magic scroll. We will have to take that as an offering to get our third magic point of the game. And now, trouble arises. This time it's for real. Also, I think they spelled the curd wrong. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's one R. I don't know. Anyway, turns out the monsters have come out of the castle and want human sacrifices. And sadly, three people have been chosen by drawing lots to become the monster's next meal or something, and sadly, one of them is Teddy. They want you to head to the old castle to save their son and their land, but before you do that, you want to go to the lake. I guess I could do it on the, uh, where that fishing boat is, because I feel like it. And use the rain on it. This is the first time we will use the rain. Also, the game does not tell you to do this. But, this is there, so I'm gonna do it. Just rain on the lake, and for 20 SP, you can use the rain on the spot on the map that you choose to use it on. And when, when you have it rain on the lake, you will raise the water level of the lake. You will find a strange jewel. Now, when we go to the Take an Offering screen, it is a source of life. This is an extra life for fighting monsters, and unlike the ones you find in Act Mode, this one is permanent. So, even when you save your game, you will always start with four lives whenever you start an act. Also, apparently that scroll I was talking about, I thought it was a, was a uh, source of magic and, and uh, M MMP. It wasn't. It was Magical Stardust. The second of four spells in the game. And this thing is very, very useful. Because... When you go to the Sky Palace and equip it, you will have one of probably the best spell in the game. Because when you press A to use it, you will lift up your sword and cause a whole bunch of shooting stars to rain down. This will dam damage any on-screen enemy, assuming that the little shooting stars actually touch the enemy and hit them. And it is very, very good against bosses. This thing is really good. But with that, there's nothing else we can do except fight monsters. And I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Also, I'm going to set the message speed back to 2 because apparently that's the default. So, join me next time, where I go through Blood Pool Act 2, face the boss that's over there, and then head on to the next land. Until then, this is Prince Watercress, take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!